the court on Pakistan now. Pakistan. Thank you, Mr. President, and I would like to thank the distinguished uh, Secretary General for uh, his clarion call and warning the, the world of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, if we are to respond to his, his call, uh, I think our response has to be equally robust and perhaps even revolutionary. For the four areas he mentioned, firstly, the issue of tensions in the world, I think what is, what is required is to see that the prevention or that the source of tensions uh, are the politics of the great powers and the prevention of action also flows from the same power, power politics and rivalry among the major powers. What is required, therefore, is for the United Nations, for the Secretary General and for this assembly to respond by speaking truth to power and to stand up to the power that is exercised in order to play politics with the small countries of the world. I think unless we do that, unless we bring these issues before this General Assembly, before this assembly which represents the peoples of the United Nations, I think we will not have the response that is required. It cannot remain in small forums of the powerful where double and triple standards are applied in the resolution and uh, solution of conflicts. Secondly, on climate change, my country is one of the 10 most affected by climate change and we are at the bottom of the list of those who have contributed to climate change. When there are th threats to peace, when there are human rights violations, the United Nations Security Council is very quick to apply sanctions against countries. In this case, we are facing an existential threat to millions and billions of people. Is it not time? for the Security Council to take up this issue and see whether those who are not fulfilling the obligations that are contained in the Paris Agreements, that they should be obliged through the mechanisms that are available to the international community to oblige such action. I think it is time to take such revolutionary steps if we are going to save the planet and our species. On globalization, we are facing a financing gap of 2.5 trillion, that is $25 trillion over 10 years. The global GDP is 120 trillion. The usual ratio of investment to GDP in most countries is 20 to 30%. We can easily, therefore, by these statistics, be able to mobilize that money. The money is there, $10 trillion sitting in negative interest accounts across the world. The money is there. The question is how to link development with that money that is available. And we have to find the ways. I think there are ways to do it, but we have to think imaginatively and act decisively to get that investment into the developing countries, into countries which need it. Lastly, on technology, yes, there is a dark side to the web. There, 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 is, uh, there are regulations that are required. And, and to address this, it is member states and the United Nations which must now impose the regulations on the sectors which have run amok in the world and we have the capability to do so, we have the power to do so, and we need to do so to avoid the, the repercussions of, of the dark side of the web. But there is another dimension, and that dimension is today the world of technology is being split apart. The integration of technology which has allowed our world to progress is being split between the East and the West. This is a conscious policy that is taking place. It is going to retard progress in 
across the world, and we need to see how to, be, to reintegrate the global technological race because that is essential for the future progress of the developing countries. I uh, thank you very much. I thank you, uh, uh, the peer of Pakistan, for your statement.